when we um, think about uh, pay for performance, it's useful to start with the basic objectives of executive pay and uh, also very useful to start with um, um, the history of executive pay. Now, um, to my mind, the basic objectives of executive pay really haven't changed since the rise of large companies in the late 19th century, that what you're trying to do is create strong incentives to increase shareholder value. You're trying to retain key talent and you're trying to uh, limit shareholder costs. So that that's really, to my mind, been the same for over 100 years. What has changed is how companies have approached trying to achieve those, uh, um, those objectives. If we look back to the first half of the 20th century, executive pay was really heavily based on value sharing concepts. It was typically sharing in an economic profit measure. A um, classic example is uh, General Motors um, uh, bonus pool, uh, which was equal to 10% uh, of profit in excess of a 7% return on capital. Um, and uh, General Motors used that formula without any change, um, either in the sharing percentage or the uh, minimum return for 25 years. Um, it used the basic um, framework um, from 1918 to 1992. Um, and um, that kind of system really created a real um, sort of manager investment partnership. Um, a system like that makes it fairly easy to have strong incentives and limit shareholder costs, but the real challenge is managing uh, retention risk. And uh, General Motors and uh, many other companies actually had a practice of um, keeping back some of the formula generated uh, amount um, to create a reserve that they could use in years when uh, uh, performance was poor due to market and industry factors. So that was the, the key challenge of those systems. But um, since the, uh, the Second World War, executive pay has really shifted to a much stronger focus on really retention and cost and really shifted to um, competitive pay concepts um, for example, the notion of 50th percentile um, target pay um, and used um, competitive pay concepts to guide pay um, together with the, um, um, the reliance on a high pay or high percent of pay at risk as a way to create a strong incentive. And the thinking is that um, if you don't allow pay target pay to fall below the 20 or the 50th percentile, you'll assure retention. If you don't allow it to go above, you'll take care of shareholder cost. And then if you have a high percent of pay at risk, that that will ensure a strong incentive. Now, it turns out um, that last piece is the real flaw in the modern approach to competitive pay or the modern approach to, um, to executive pay. And uh, the key problem is that the whole notion of having target pay in dollars and translating it into shares creates an inherent performance penalty. The basic problem is that if you have target pay of say a million dollars and um, the stock price is a hundred, you need to provide 10,000 shares to deliver the million dollars. But the problem arises when the stock price changes. If the stock price changes to, um, <clears throat> if the uh, stock price falls to uh, from a hundred to fifty dollars, you need to double the number of shares. Um, and if the stock price um, doubles from uh, um, from 100 to 200 dollars, then you cut the number of shares in half. So what you've done is create a system where superior performance or rising stock price is penalized with a reduction in shares, and poor performance, a declining stock price, is rewarded by an increase in shares. And this is an extremely significant factor, but a very um, unrecognized one. Mm -hmm.